control of insects, mite pests, and diseases is essential for successful home gardening and part of general management practices for your vegetable garden. Plant symptoms might reflect disease injury from fungi, bacteria, nematodes, or viruses, insect or mite injury, chemical or herbicide injury, or physical or environmental damage caused by growing conditions, location, or soil fertility deficiencies or excesses. Some of the good gardening practices include Conduct soil tests and follow the recommendation to supply appropriate nutrients as needed. Adding extra fertilizer won't create healthy soil because excess nitrogen or phosphorus can promote insects and disease problems and can lead to runoff issues. Add organic matter to the soil each year in the form of soil amendments or mulch. Nursery and garter catalogs often identify such varieties. Start with quality seeds and healthy plants. Purchase stocky dark green transplants and buy certified virus-free seed potatoes. Remove the weeds and grass from the growing site because they compete for nutrients and water. Rapidly growing vegetables can better tolerate or outgrow insect, mite and disease damage, but they also quickly use up available nutrients. Apply fertilizer and water at critical times during maximum plant growth is essential for producing pest and disease resistant plants. Remove infected plants during the season to prevent spread within the garden. And remove plant debris after harvest to avoid harboring insects, mites and diseases. Dispose of or burn diseased plants, fruits and vegetables. Composting is seldom, thorough enough to eliminate disease causing fungi and bacteria. Planting the same crop in the same place year after year creates losses due to soil-borne diseases and overwriting insect pests. Follow a crop rotation of at least three years for the four major vegetable plant families. Solanum, tomato, potato, pepper and eggplant, cucurbit, melons, squash and cucumbers, cruciferous, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage and brussels sprouts, and allium, onion, garlic, and leeks. 8 to 10 hours of direct sunlight a day are necessary for proper growth, flowering, and footing of most vegetable crops. Sunlight also helps to dry foliage and reduce infection by many fungal and bacterial diseases. Plants receiving either too much or not enough water will be less vigorous and more susceptible to insect and mite pests and diseases. Consider using a form of drip irrigation which will keep foliar dry and prevent foliar diseases, while at the same time using water more efficiently. If using a hose, direct the water towards the ground and avoid wetting the foliage. Mulch helps control weeds and reduces moisture evaporation from the soil surface. Mulch also helps prevent rot caused when fruit is in contact with bare soil. When tilled under, organic mulches become valuable soil amendments. Overcrowding plants can result in weak growth and an increase in foliar diseases. Steak, cages, trellises, and pruning all help to increase air circulation. Seeds planted too early are more susceptible to rot. Delay planting until the soil has warmed 
to allow rapid germination of seeds and growth of young plants. Learn their life cycle, their habits and stages they are most easily controlled. Refrain from using any pesticide until you have correctly identified a given pest and determined the proper time for control. Plants that have few insect, mite and disease problems include loose leaf lettuce, rhubarb, Swiss chard, garlic, coarse lettuce, leeks, parsley, sweet potatoes, okra, beets, snap peas, parsnips, carrots, onions, and kale. Birds are predators of insects. For instance, more than a dozen species of birds are known to feed on various moth larvae. Check the undersides of plants' leaves. Detect symptoms when they first develop, so that pest problems can be more easily controlled. Accept the fact that there might be some damage from pests and even an occasional crop failure. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to see similar videos and learn more good gardening practices.